Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. Today's module is going to focus on ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancies constitute about 2% of all total pregnancies, although they're commonly seen in the emergency department. Ectopic pregnancy is more commonly seen in women with a history of tubal ligation, who are using intrauterine devices for contraception, or have a history of sexually transmitted diseases such as pelvic inflammatory disease with scarring of the tubes. Ectopic pregnancy is also commonly seen in women using fertility agents, which accounts for the increasing rate of ectopic pregnancy overall. As a golden rule, we must consider ectopic pregnancy in all women with abdominal pain and or vaginal bleeding and a positive pregnancy test until ruled out by sonography. Let's begin by reviewing the OBGYN anatomy that we'll need to know to perform bedside ultrasound of the uterus and the adnexa. We'll begin by locating the lower cervical region of the uterus, the portion above that, the body, and the fundal region of the uterus above the body, which is where we define an intrauterine pregnancy to be located. Notice the interstitial region of the uterus, that region of the uterus that abuts the fallopian tube. In a corneal uterus, this is known as the corneal region. Here we also see the portions of the fallopian tube, the proximal ismal region, the distal infundibulum, and notice the ampullary region which comprises the majority of the fallopian tube. We also see here the broad ligament which encases the fallopian tube and ovary in the lateral region of the adnexa. Remember that the ovary is relatively mobile within the broad ligament. Now let's review a transvaginal long axis scan from a woman who presented with a positive pregnancy test who had lower abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. Notice the fundus as shown here to the left, the cervix to the right. We see here the presence of a thickened white endometrial stripe in the midline of the uterus. Notice the pelvic cul-de-sac, that potential space posterior to the uterus. Notice here the absence of an intrauterine pregnancy. Now we'll confirm the absence of an IUP by scanning in the transvaginal short axis plane. Here we have the probe marker oriented towards the patient's right and we're cutting the uterus in cross section. Notice again the thickened endometrial stripe in the midline of the uterus and the pelvic cul-de-sac posteriorly. Again we see the absence of an IUP and also note the absence of free fluid, dark anechoic fluid collections within the pelvic cul-de-sac. So, given these findings, we're now concerned about the presence of an ectopic pregnancy. So let's begin our discussion of ectopic pregnancies by reviewing the locations that we commonly see ectopic pregnancies to be found. We see here a normal uterus to the left and a bicornate uterus to the right. We remember that a fundal location is the definition of an intrauterine pregnancy as shown smack in the middle of the normal uterus to the left. However, we can have variants of ectopic pregnancies within the uterus as shown in the interstitial location in the normal uterus to the left and in the corneal region in the bicornate uterus to the right. We can also have implantations low within the cervical region of the uterus as shown in the normal uterus to the left. Now, most ectopic pregnancies will be located within the fallopian tube, and of those, the majority will be found in the ampullary region as that comprises the majority of the fallopian tube. But we can have implantations more proximal within the ismal region or distal within the infundibular region. Now, tough ectopics to diagnose are those that implant within the ovary, within the abdominal cavity, or within the peritoneal lining. And these can be very, very hard to diagnose and commonly grow to an advanced stage before diagnosis. So returning to our case, given the presence of a positive pregnancy test and the absence of an IUP on bedside ultrasound, we were very concerned about ectopic pregnancy and decided to scan out to the left at Nexa. Here, notice we're scanning out to the left at Nexa and we have a positive finding. What we see here is a thickened fallopian tube comprising what is known as the bagel sign. And notice within the thickened fallopian tube we have another positive finding. That is the presence of a fetal pole. So, in this patient we were able to diagnose an ampullary ectopic pregnancy and our next move was to call OBGYN STAT for a consultation. So, in conclusion, ectopic pregnancies constitute the greatest cause overall of maternal mortality, 
and we must consider an ectopic pregnancy in all women with a positive pregnancy test where an intrauterine pregnancy is not visualized within the fundal part of the uterus. Most ectopic pregnancies are going to be located in the fallopian tube and we may actually visualize the ectopic with ultrasound evaluation of the adnexa as shown in this module. So we'll return with ectopic pregnancy part two which goes over the varied manifestations of ectopics.